Okay, let's take a look at problem number 12. It says here, if boxes of cereal have weights that are normally distributed with a mean of 287 grams and a standard deviation of 6 grams, what should be the minimum amount in each box so the weight will not be below the mean by more than three standard deviations? Okay, if I draw a normal curve that looks like this. Okay, and this line right here represents the mean. In this case, it's 287. And the standard deviation we're told is 6 grams. So, one standard deviation would be like 6 plus the 287 would be 293. Two standard deviations would be 299. I'm just adding 6 each time. And then three standard deviations would be 305. Okay, and then on the left side, we subtract 6 from the 287 for one standard deviation, deviation below it, it will be 281, and then 281 from minus 6 will be 275, and then three standard deviations below it, that will be 269. Okay, because it can't be below the mean by more than three standard deviations, so here, this represents three standard deviations below the mean, which is 269. So in this case here, each box of cereal should weigh at least no less than 269 grams. Okay. Uh, it's all based on pretty much this normal curve. All right, number 13. Fuel economy estimates for automobiles built in a certain year predicted a mean of 24.8 milligram miles per gallon and a standard deviation 7.2 miles per gallon for highway driving. Assume that the normal distribution can be applied within what range are 95% of the automobiles? Okay. Now, in your textbook, they talk about the normal curve. And if we're dealing with 95%, that means that it can be no more than two standard deviations above and below the mean. Because two standard deviations above and below the mean represent this area of 95%. So, in this case... We're looking at a mean of 24. We're looking at a mean of 24.8 miles per gallon. That's this number right here. And the standard deviation, of course, is 7.2. So if we add 7.2 to the 24.8, that'd be 32.0. That's one standard deviation above the mean. And add another 7.2 to it, it'll be 39.2. Now, if we subtract 7.2 from 24.8, that would be. 17.6 and then subtract another 17.2 from the 17.6 that will be 10.4 so the low end will be 10.4 and the high end is 39.2 so that means in this particular case the range for 95 percent of the automobiles will be from 10.4 miles per gallon to 39.2 miles per gallon. Okay. All right, take a look at this next problem here. For the following set of numbers, we want to find the mean, the median, and the mode. And this is the set of numbers that we're looking at. So here we want to find the mean, the median, and the mode using our graphing calculator if we like to. Okay, let's go to stat, press the stat B button, and that's going to be, in this case here, we want to press number one for edit because we're going to be putting in new data values, and to clear these out, we always press the up arrow key, and then hit the clear, and then enter, and then we're going to enter those data values here, one at a time. 
In this case, we're going to enter 11, 13, 24, 9, 24, and 10. And then we always press the stat button and then use our right arrow key to access the calc menu and then select number one for one variable statistics and then hit enter. As you can see here, the mean is going to be 15.2 or just 15. The median, if you hit your down arrow key, is simply going to be, okay, now let's check our, Well, I left one out. That's 14 and then 10. Okay, so that's going to change everything here. Which means that the mean in this case is 15 on the button. The median, hit your down arrow key, is going to be actually 13. And the mode, now you'll have to look at the numbers that occur the most frequently. You may have more than one mode and, or none. In this case, is 24. It occurs twice. So the mode in this case is 24. Okay. I left out one of the numbers in the uh, when I type those in. Leave one of those numbers out. You're going to get pretty much going to get a wrong answer. Okay. Number 15. Here you're given the data listed below that represents the yield for a regular corn weed and you want to construct a box plot for that data. Okay. In this case here we can enter these numbers here but we don't have to create the box plot because we can look at the high the uh, high number and the low number and also look at the upper and the lower quartiles as well as the median. Now the next video, I'm going to show you how this is going to be done using the TI-83 graphing calculator.